Dogs. Why, that is the subject of our program. And I hope you'll stay tuned as we delve into the mystifying and somewhat inexplicable behavior of the species known as dogs, or more formally, Canis lupus familiaris, or as I like to call them, mutton heads. <laughs> to understand dogs, we must retrace their history to have a better understanding of what made them what they are today slobbering flea hotels to drink out of toilets. Most scientists believe that dogs are directly descended from the gray wolf. The gray wolf was both a hunter and a hunted. Wolves travel in packs and use a loud and annoying howl to communicate. A uh, wolf's howl can be heard up to 10 miles and their breath can be smelled up to 17 miles. It is difficult to say exactly how the first wolf was tamed, paving the way to the present day domesticated dog. Oh yes, charming, aren't they? Moving on. Early cavemen used dogs to help them hunt. Dogs had an acute sense of smell, and they could pick up scents that the cavemen could not. As you see, dogs were quite helpful to early man. continued to train and tame the dog. He must have been searching for some reason for a dog to exist. This next evolution in dogdom, or as I like to say, dumb dogdom, introduced us to the working dog. The working dog was a dog that was good at herding, hauling, and pulling. <laughs> Obviously, man had his work cut out for him in trying to turn the working dog into something of value? That's right, boy. In fact, I believe you were bred to be a working dog, specifically a paperweight or a doorstop or a big stone. Oh. Good boy. For a brief time, dogs became slightly more sophisticated as lords and ladies of the manor hoping to find a purpose for the dog, use their beast for sport. Matusha, is that a covey of pheasants in the distance? 
Well, I do believe you are right, Nigel, old boy. Uh, shall we point the way? Indeed, let's. Tea. Somehow, between then and now, dogs became very, very stupid. How, how stupid are they? I thought you'd never ask. I'll show you how stupid. May we have a well-respected scientist, please? That's good afternoon, or good evening. I have no idea what time it is, but I am here to test the intelligence of your average dog. But first, as a comparison, I shall test a non-dog animal. Might I have a volunteer? Here's your volunteer. Check my smarts, Professor. Ah, yes, very good. We shall check the brain power of this pussycat. <laughs> now, according to this, the cat is as smart as a rocket scientist, a brilliant surgeon, a great philosopher. How about the guy who invented microwave lasagna? Oh. Now, I am to test a dog. But where will I find a dog to test? Un momento, scientist type. Here, this is a dog. I know that because I'm incredibly smart. Stay. Now I shall measure the power of his brain. Any second now. It is here somewhere, and it's a... Uh... Ah! There it is. No, that's a pimple. Mm. Oh, okay. Here, maybe this will help. According to this, the dog is as smart as a, a common house plant, an amoeba, a medium-sized container of potato salad. Boy, oh, don't take it so hard, Odie. Potato salad's very popular. Nice work, Professor. Glad to be of service, Garfield. Sometime this century, people got the notion that dogs were fashionable. <clears throat> They even carried dogs around like they were accessories. Well, I guess if you can't find anything useful to do with a dog, you might as well dress it up and take it out. Uh, check that. I guess you can dress a dog up, but apparently you cannot take them out. And we're clear. Nice job, Garfield. Let's take five. Whoa, hold the phone. I didn't write the history of dogs. I'm just narrating it. I know, boy. I'd be embarrassed, too. I think you need a little fresh air. Dogs. Can't live with them. Can't live with them. is on fire. <laughs> huh? 
And you say the dogs saved you and your pizza parlor? That's right. The dogs, the save Vero, Vero's building, Vero's pizza. They are heroes. They wake me up, they put out fire. All these dogs, these brilliant, brave dogs, they save Vero, they get free pizza for life. You gotta be kidding me. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, and cats, and dogs, during the course of filming The History of Dogs, an unusual thing happened. Witness. <laughs> Therefore, I must conclude that while dogs do love to drink at a toilet, sniff each other, slobber, drool, and... I must also admit that throughout history, dogs have exhibited some admirable traits. They have keen sight and smell. <laughs> They're strong. <gasps> they are intelligent. <gasps> and they are loyal and brave. <laughs> In conclusion, let's just say that dogs are not worthless beads of sweat. <laughs> that they might actually have some value. <laughs> that they might, in fact, be man's best friend. And cut. That's a wrap, people. So, how is that? Oh. oh, and uh, did I mention that they are Cat's best friend as well? a crime punishable by no less than 15 years in a maximum security prison. Or at least it should be. All right, I'm up. Let's see who's too stupid to not be sleeping at this hour. Oh, it's you, Harry. What are you looking for? Leftovers. In this house? Nothing is left over. So I see. What I really had my appetite set on was that nice, plump, juicy bluebird. Mmm, does that look like good eating? But I'll bet you've had your eye on that one for a while, right? Not right. I never chase any bird smaller than a roast turkey with stuffing, mashed potatoes, cranberry sauce, and that cream corn that John's mother made. What? No bird chasing? I gave it up. Too much work, too many feathers, not enough drumsticks. Then, uh, do you mind? Be my guest. Bluebird pie, here I come. <laughs> you win this round, bird, but I'll get you next time. Maybe those trash cans over on Maple Drive will have leftovers. Chasing birds. Looks like fun. But I'm not going to get back into that again. My chasing bird days are behind me. No, no! They're ahead of me! I must chase birds! Okay, if you were a cat, you'd understand. <clears throat> the hunt is on. <laughs> oh, 
It's going over to the neighbor's yard. It won't get away from me. Do -de -do -do -do. <laughs> <laughs> that bird can't get away from me. I'll just wait here until she comes back, and then I'll catch her. She has to come back. She left her eggs here. sitting here waiting for my dinner to return. <laughs> the Garfield strip's funny today. I <sighs> just gotta wait here. <sighs> no matter how long it takes. She shouldn't leave her eggs alone this long. Not with creatures like me about. What's wrong with that mother bird? Leaving her eggs alone all day? She kind of cold. I don't think that's good for them. Oh well, not my problem. I'll chase her tomorrow if she comes back. She has to come back. She has to take care of those cute little eggs. The female bluebird lays a clutch of three to five. Hi, Garfield. Eggs. I'm watching a very interesting documentary. Anything about feeding your cat? It's all about birds hatching eggs. The incubation process in which the female sits on the eggs to keep them warm takes around two weeks. It's not that warm out there. If the heat is not maintained, the eggs will perish. Perish? Oh, well. Like I keep telling myself, it's not my problem. <sighs> oh, I think I'll just give me a little sneak. Perish. Maybe I'll just make sure the mother bluebird has come back to sit on the eggs. I'm sure she has. She hasn't. Oh, this is not good. Maybe a muffler or a heating pad. I wonder if there's a place up here to plug in an electric blanket. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Okay, but don't tell anyone I did this. There you go. Keep warm the legs. It's just until the mother bluebird comes back. She'll be back any minute. Any minute. Now there's another one being born. And this one. <laughs> I'm a mother. What am I thinking? No, no, no. I'm I'm not your mama. Wait, stop that. I'm not your mama. I'm a cat. Honest. I am. Here, listen to this. Meow. Meow. See? I hate to abandon the little fellows, but I don't know anything about taking care of baby birds. No, not Mama. Why are you unclear on this concept? Oh, good 
time for a nap. It's always a good time for a nap. <sighs> oh, cute little birds, but I'm not cut out to be their mama. Again. Look, you can't stay with me, fellas. And my water dish is not a bird bath. I don't care what you say, you can't live with me. And stop calling me Mama. Now you're gonna stay there, and that is an order. Don't look at me like that. I can't take care of you guys. You need someone who can teach you how to fly. I can't do that. You need someone who can share worms with you for lunch. I really can't do that. I'm not gonna look at him anymore. Your real mother will be back sooner or later. Now goodbye. Bye-bye, bluebirds. They'll be just fine. What if the mother bird never comes back? They could be cold. They could be hungry. <gasps> they could be Harry's lunch. My babies! Hey, hold it down, little guys. I'm gonna be eating. Let me have those birds, Harry. Get your own lunch, Garfield. I said let me have those birds. Hey, that's my meal. I saw him first. Hold it down, guys. If Harry catches us, you'll be bluebird sandwiches. Those birds are mine, Garfield. You can't get away from me, Garfield. I'm faster and I'm stronger. He's right. He is. I need a place to hide them. That's not fair, Garfield. I don't eat your lasagna. You could leave my bluebirds. Mama! Mama! Oh, big mistake. Now I'm trapped. Big mistake. Now you're trapped. I said that. Ah! Ouch! Stop. Don't hurt him. Or me. Don't hurt any of us. Now, finally, it's lunchtime. No! <laughs> I'm giving up eating birds all together. No, no. I, I was taking care of them. <laughs> Not me, guys. That's your mama. Mama? Mama! Bye-bye, guys. Come visit. Okay, so I saved some birds. You didn't see that, okay? I know where you live. But I definitely could use another snack, or two. Problem is, I'd have to get up and go to the kitchen. 
Odie, fetch me something to eat. Thanks, but no thanks. Odie, I don't eat squeaky rubber bones. Uh, nobody does, for that matter. <laughs> Except for you, of course. <laughs> hmm, should I get up and go to the kitchen? Tough decision. So far, it's been a perfect day. Woke up at 10, had breakfast, took a little nap, had lunch, watched some TV, took a little nap, watched some... Oh! Oh no, it's the end of the world and I'm still hungry. <laughs> what the? Did that really happen? Yeah, everything seems to be all right. Probably some kind of hallucination due to extreme hunger. Let's grab something to eat. <laughs> okay, that's weird. for John's checkup. Oh, sure, uh, he's right over there. What? I came for John's checkup, remember? You called me yesterday and asked me to come take a look at him. <gasps> what is going on around here? Are you all right, Garfield? You look tense. <laughs> Have you been working late on your drawings again? Huh? My drawings? What drawings? Okay, John, let's take a look at you. You seem to be slightly overweight. I'll probably have to put you on a low-calorie diet. What about dining out tonight, Garfield? There's a new Siamese restaurant downtown, supposed to be first class. I managed to book us a table. Uh, restaurant? Yeah, why not? It's a good idea. I have to get out of here! <laughs> <sighs> okay, much better, much, much better. I'm fully awake now. It was all a bad dream. Just a bad, bad, very weird dream. Hi, Garfield. Don't forget poker night on Friday. <laughs> huh? Yo, Garfield, my man. Where's your trash? It's collection day. <laughs> This crazy world where cats act like humans and humans act like cats. <laughs> Creepy. Maybe if I go back inside, everything will be back to normal. Oh, there you are. I'm finished with John. He is 10 pounds overweight. He will need to follow a diet of boiled rice for two weeks. Why are you staring at me like that? Aren't you going to answer your phone? There are days where I really don't understand you, Garfield. Hello? A uh, yes, just a second. For you, it's your publisher. Huh? Yes? I'm still waiting for your last drawings. If they are not on my desk tomorrow at 4 p.m., I'm tearing up your contract and you can find another publisher. My contract? Does this mean I have to work in order to survive? Yes, dear, like everyone else. Oh, you 
You spend too much time daydreaming, Garfield. Snap out of it. Not a cat. Pick me up at eight. Huh? Oh, yeah, the, the uh, Siamese restaurant. What is this horrible world where cats have to work? There's no pulse, Dr. Cagliari. Don't panic, nurse. I... Sorry, guys. As much as I like soap operas, I have to find out what this crazy world is all about. Parallel universes. <laughs> Do they really exist? Or does one only find them in science fiction novels? Oh, are you... Parallel universes? Controversial physicist Dr. Angus McLoon is here with us to answer that question. Well, Shirley, theoretically, parallel universes could exist. They could probably be accessed through wormholes. I have just invented a device that can prove their existence. That's it. I'm in a parallel universe. I traveled through a wormhole and ended up in a parallel universe, which explains the identical Garfield who was going the other way, probably to my universe. That's fine. But how did I end up here in the first place? What a terrible mishap. What did I do? What did I do? Poor Garfield. Ah! Hey, you're the guy I just saw on TV. G -g 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 Garfield, you're alive. Is that you? Uh, yeah, I guess. At least I hope so. If I weren't me anymore, I'd really miss myself. Because sometimes if I say I'm talking to me, I mean me and my, uh, well. Anyway, you're the Pearl Universe guy, right? Yes, but you already know that since I'm your best friend. You're my best friend? Wow, there's no accounting for taste. Anyway, what if I told you I'm not the Garfield you know and did I come from a parallel universe where humans wait on cats? <gasps> a parallel universe? <laughs> My invention! It worked! It worked! I accessed a parallel universe! I'm a genius, Garfield! A genius! Okay, okay, Doc, settle down. My last meal is about to make a comeback. After you disappeared, I mean, after the other you disappeared, I had to make sure whether or not you, I mean the other you, were really gone, hence my presence in this house. Very thoughtful of you, Doc. Now, how about telling me how I ended up here? Fair enough. Let's go to my lab. This is my latest invention, the who. The what? The who. The worm hole opener. This morning, I invited you, I mean the other you, over to my lab to show it to you. This apparatus can open wormholes and detect parallel universes. Nifty. How does it work? Oh, <laughs> it's a very complex operation. You need to throw the switches and hit the buttons in the exact right sequence, and I'm the only one who knows it. The odds of anyone else finding the right sequence are one in a million. Oh, yeah? A month's supply of lasagna that I beat the odds. <laughs> Be my guest. <laughs> I don't believe it. You did it! When lasagna is at stake, I always win. Get away from the sphere! Oh. No! Oh no! Cats are slaves. They have jobs. They have to wait on humans. It's disgusting. I'm really happy to go home. And your world stinks, too. Cats do nothing all day but eat, sleep, and watch TV. It's so boring. I can't wait to go home. Hey, you have drawings to deliver tomorrow. Got it. And you have to pick up Arlene at 8. You're dining out. What did you say? Home sweet home. Hmm. Hi, Odie. Good to see you. Turn around. Don't thank me. I said don't thank me. Some things never change. Garfield, your lasagna is ready. Fresh out of the oven. 
And that's all right with me. Ah, it's so good to work again. That other world where cats just sit around doing nothing was dreadful. How dare you stand me up? Do you know how hard it is to get a table in that restaurant? There's a six-month waiting list. Restaurant? What restaurant? Oh, don't play games with me, Garfield. I am not in the mood. Oh, yes, of course. I, I, I can explain everything. Remember Doc McLoon? Well, he invented a device called the Who, the wormhole opener, and I was accidentally sucked into it and wound up in a parallel world identical to our world, except cats weren't working. Do you really expect me to believe that ridiculous story? Well, the wormhole part, at least. Oh, you are not going to get away with this, Garfield. And that's a promise. You know what? Maybe that other world wasn't so bad after all. <laughs> Some of us prefer to oversleep. Sometimes I wish time would just stand still. Wake up, Garfield. It's late. It's only late if you want to do something with your day. I plan to just lie around, so I'm right on time. <laughs> Here's your morning lasagna, Garfield. <sighs> huh? My frozen lasagna is still frozen. <clears throat> Sorry if it's not right. I think my timer is busted. <sighs> time for no more timer. Oh well, at least there's coffee. I'm late! Bye! <laughs> That's right. Garfield Cat now comes in the new coffee flavor. Ah! I forgot to put the trash cans out! <laughs> What's that you got there? Some sort of old pocket watch. I fished it out of a can we picked up a few blocks back. I thought it might be worth something. Eh, it's trash. It ain't worth nothing. John's always so worried about enough time to do everything. You know what I worry about? Whether I have enough time to finish my morning nap before I start my afternoon nap. Don't bother me unless there's a serious emergency. Or ice cream. You're waking me up. This better be important. So he found an old watch. Big, fat, hairy deal. Maybe it's a stopwatch. Let's see what happens if I click this. Huh? What? Huh? Okay. Let's see what happens when I click it again. <laughs> the 
This is great. <laughs> I may look like an ordinary, slightly overweight pussycat, but with this in my claws, I am the Time Master, Master Master. Well, John tries to rush me around tomorrow morning. Seven o'clock! Oh no! I overslept! Not today, alarm clock. I've got to go get... Much better. <sighs> Yum. <sighs> oh, I got another three hours of beautiful, glorious sleep. Eh? I see it's still seven o'clock. Tummy rumbling. Time to get John started on breakfast. Breakfast on the table. Now, this is the way to be in a hurry. Take your time. Here you are, Garfield. Sweet oat crunchies, 1% oat, 99% sugar. An important part of my balanced breakfast. Remember, you're on a strict... <laughs> One bowl of the stuff. You want to bet? I can't believe this thing can just stop time, but apparently it can. I only have a few more houses to deliver to. I'm going to skip the one that gives me all the trouble. I'm not in the mood for walking today. I think I'll uh, get a ride. No, not the one with the cat that eats lasagna. It's... <laughs> down the street with all the chihuahuas. Miss Castianetti just got new dentures and her sister Marge is coming to visit. <laughs> I'm passing the house with all those yapping rats. We'll have to do something about this. I have nightmares about those dogs every night. And those dogs are tormenting me. They'll get to know one another. Nothing could ruin this day. Of course, I didn't take into account the chance of running into normal. So, tell me, Garfield, how do I look today? You can be brutally honest with me. Great, really great, or really, really, really super great. D, none of the above. I'm on my way to the biggest cat beauty pageant you ever saw. I've been grooming for weeks to snatch the first prize. Wish me luck. Not that I need any. <laughs> I think it's time for a total makeover, Nermal. <laughs> She's not saying anything. She must not mind. <laughs> Boy, that's you. It's you. It's really you. Off to win first prize in the cat show. Bye, Garfield. And if you don't, I hear the circus is in town. 
I know this intersection. It takes forever for the light to change. So, we won't wait. Being the Time Master has many advantages. <laughs> that was fun. Let's try that again. <laughs> huh? Oh my. Do any of you know how to fix one of these? Come on. There's got to be a way to get the world started again. What if I broke the world? What if it can never be started again? I guess there'd be some advantages. I could eat at Vito's Pizzeria anytime I wanted to. Hey, Vito! Any pizzas hot out of the oven? Can you finish this one? I'm kind of hungry. Vito can't make pizza with time standing still. No one can do anything. Those fine, upstanding people who make lasagna can't make lasagna. The whole world's come to a screeching halt thanks to me and this stupid watch. Hey, you! Move! Do something! Don't let time pass you by! Don't just stand there! Just because time is standing still doesn't mean you have to stand still! I'm all alone! No one can do anything except me, which means I have to do everything. No one to cook for me, no one to take care of me, and no TV. This is all your fault, you stupid time-stopping device. <laughs> oh, no, stop! Ow! People are moving again, but they're all going backwards. Time is going backwards, and I'm going backwards too. Some of us prefer to oversleep. Sometimes I wish time would just stand still. <laughs> no, I don't. That was the most horrible, awful nightmare ever. Except the part about Nermal. That was beautiful. Oh. <sighs>